Well, Tony Burke, you and I recorded a show about multi-vendor EVPN a while ago, and that turned into, hey, we should do something for YouTube that's like an intro to EVPN, what that's all about, because it's a bit of a complex topic, isn't it, Tony? Yeah. Uh, it's Actually, it's, I would say it's not as complex as it would seem on the outset. It's one of those things that's kind of intimidating. It's like you know a, a network person getting involved in Python. It's a lot more intimidating than it really is when you get down to it. You're like, oh, that wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was. Well, it, yeah, it's one of those for me with EVPN, the devil's in the details. So what you're about to watch here is Tony, who is an instructor and knows this topic very well, uh, giving us an intro to EVPN. I'm going to play the role of student. I know EVPN at a high level, Tony, like what it's supposed to do. We're exchanging MAC addresses across a layer three fabric. EVPNs are our VXLAN control plane. And I'm going to I'm going to stop talking there uh, and just let you describe it from there. But uh, but again, if you're watching, that's what that's what's going on. Tony, the instructor who knows this really well, me playing the role of student. Hopefully you as you watch this exchange between Tony and I are going to pick up what EVPN is all about. So uh, so set it up for us, Tony. How do you uh, when you teach this topic, how do you like to go after it? Well, uh, a couple of things. Uh, you're the perfect student for this type of interaction because you know networking very well, but it's just the EVPN part is, uh, is you know it at a high level, but you don't know the inner details. And you actually know more than you think you do because a lot of these concepts that you've worked with in other parts of networking are going to carry over really well to that. So that's what I'm going to teach to. Perfect. Um, yeah, another thing is that I'm going to teach you EVPN without a single configuration. So um, <laughs> Okay. Um, one of the mistakes I made, on, made early on in my career, and I think a lot of the audience can probably relate to this, is we started from the configurations and kind of worked our way into the concepts. And I think that's not the right way to do it. I think it mu makes much more sense to understand the concepts first and then get into the configuration. Because how many times, like maybe on a Cisco device, you're trying to set up a VPC and then you cut and paste what you see in a document or whatever and you paste it into the device and it doesn't work and you have no idea why. I'd rather understand like in BGP why I'd be doing, you know, the different uh, address family paragraphs I presume I'm going to be doing and why I'd be setting up certain uh, VTEPs, VLAN tunnel endpoints before actually doing that. I, I don't want to reverse engineer it. I, yeah, I want to teach it. I want to learn it the way you're going to teach it, Tony. Teach me the concepts and then and let's build a configuration when, in, in theory, I'll know what I'm doing. Right. And so these concepts are going to translate into any of the vendors that do EVPN. And specifically, what we're talking about is MP, BGP, EVPN over VXLAN. So kind of a word salad like we talked in the, in the podcast. Yeah. Uh, so there's other types of EVPN, but we're talking about uh, the data center and now increasingly more uh, campus uh, util utilization of EVPN. So utilization in the uh, campus again. Th my use case just being a, a multi-tenancy where I've got different business units or something I would like to keep separate. Right. So that it doesn't traditional campus uh, where you're at is not only your location but it's also your identity. So your IP address is tied to the floor you're on or maybe the wireless. Uh, area that you're on, but with uh, EVPN, you can make it so that doesn't matter what where I am in the building, or even perhaps which building I'm in, I can have the same security policies applied to me as a person, as my identity, whatever NAC I'm using to log in gives me credentials. And um, that, that's not very common yet in the campus, but that's what all of the vendors are kind of moving towards: is tying NAC in with uh, network access control, tying that in with. Um, what segment that you're allowed on to, and that segment can be distributed across multiple devices. So one last teaching question for you, Tony. Like I'm looking at your iPad screen that you're sharing. Does this mean no PowerPoint slides? You're just going to draw things on your iPad to explain this? We're going to go pure iPad, no configurations, no PowerPoints. Awesome. So the the, the good thing is that it's going to be no PowerPoints. So the bad thing is you're going to have to try to read my handwriting. Which, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, do my, I'll do my best. I'm sure it'll be great.